Hey everyone, my name is Rhonda Robson and welcome to my Fluid Art channel. Today we are going to be doing some blooms for you, six of them in particular, and those blooms we're going to turn into 12 wine glasses. And you're going to want to stay to the very end because I'm going to show you how I take these blooms and put them on the wine glasses. It's different than what you would think. I'm not pouring on them. I'm actually placing the skins on there. So two through 10 steps will be at the very end. But let's get started with bloom number one. All right, I'm gonna do these in fast speed a little bit. So the first one is, we're gonna put the Sherwin-Williams semi-gloss white paint down, and then I'm gonna be putting the colors on here. Now the colors are mixed with the three parts Sherwin-Williams base C and two parts polyacrylic. And I take the paint and I mix it one to one ratio with that paint mix that I created. And you can kind of see how I've got all those colors off to the side. Then my cell activator is three parts American Floetrol, one part Amsterdam paint, one part glue all, and six drops of the Minwax wood conditioner. And you can kind of see me as I am blowing the cell activator across the colors as I blow down and across. So you get very close, and, and this just takes a lot of time to kind of mask it really does but you know if you find a spot like right right there that I'm doing the white I just really just blow straight down and then sometimes I'll come back in here and I'll blow across it again like I did just there now I'm allowing the paint to come back into the center and then you know I'm, it's not a perfect bloom so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my skewer and I am going to make these little curly cues and so you just bring paint into the center or into areas that you want extra color or maybe a little swoosh or something like that within there. So that's all I did there is I'm just kind of playing with it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin this out. And you don't wanna spin it too fast. I was kind of spinning that one just a little too fast, but look at that, isn't that cool? Those colors are really amazing. And I love the lacing that the cell activator created. So there's the dry, and then there they are on my wine glasses, beautiful. All right, so, Bloom number two. We're gonna add um, all kinds of different really cool colors, but of course you've gotta put that pillow paint down first. And I call it base paint, it's also pillow paint. It's just something that is going to be that cushion between your tile and the colors that you're putting on there. So my colors, I use the three parts Sherwin-Williams base C and then the um, um, polyacrylic and then I take that mix and I do a one-to-one -one ratio. Now you're gonna see in a lot of my my blooms in a lot of my paintings is I'm starting to add a lot more fluid um, fluorescent not fluid that's all fluid art <laughs> but I add a little bit more of the fluorescent color and I always want to add some type of shimmer so the fluorescent yellow is in there and then you see me putting on the gold there and I'm just kind of like putting it everywhere I'm just not caring where it goes so the cell activator is three parts American Floetrol one part Amsterdam paint one part glue all and then six to eight drops of the Minwax and then again I blow down and across the paint so I use that pillow paint to be able to help me spread it across now on this one in particular I didn't put the pillow paint to the corners and that is a mistake you're going to want to make sure that that pillow paint is completely out to the corners or you're not going to be able to spread it out using your um, mouth in order to push the cell activator out to make cells so i'm just kind of making a little bit of a muddy mess here i'm sorry but that just is just the truth however when i'm done with this and i'm going to spin it here now but when i'm done with this the actual yeah look yuck messy messy bloom but wait okay just wait because that turns into these amazing glasses so i'm just going to let you kind of watch this as I continue to spin out this yuck mess. It's not bad. It's just I wouldn't put that on my wall, right? That's not gonna be a painting that I would ever put on my wall. But I can take that and I can create those. Beautiful bottom of wine glasses, super cool. Look at them from that angle. 
awesome, right? Awesome. All right, so bloom number three. So the, the lesson I learned in the last one was not to, to get it to the corners, right? So that's what I'm doing right there is I'm putting the pillow paint into the corners and then I just put a little bit more there in the center. And again, my, my mix and my paints are a one-to-one -one ratio. And the paints I use, and I've said this in other videos, is I just go out and get what's on sale. So I might get Liquitex Basic, I might get Master's Touch, um, I've used Amsterdam, I've used Golden, um, you know, I've even got some craft paints before too. And, and really in, in all reality, it's to me, they all work the same. Now, when you do your mix, sometimes you're going to find it. Some of it is thicker. Like that one is actually thicker than some of the other ones I put down. But when, you know, for these glasses, I'm not as particular, but you're going to want the consistency to be the same. So you may need to add a little bit more of the mix or a little less of the mix. All right, so let's put the cell activator. I'm using black this time. And I do my American Floetrol Amsterdam paint, glue all in men wax, and then you blow down and across. So I love these colors, these pinks and these purples uh, in here. And then I love black on top of the pink. It just really pops. And so this isn't gonna be a, a fantastic bloom either, but the glasses are amazing again. So here I'm just allowing the paint to come back into the center. So when you blow out, you push and you make these little like indents into your paint because you have that pillow paint. So now I'm just allowing that to come back into the center and you can kind of see the excess is kind of dripping off to the sides as well. And then I'm just trying to figure out if I want to do anything with the skewer or if I'm just going to spin it out. And I just chose to spin it out. So look at that. The pink, I wish I had more of that pink in this one. And I didn't like the center, it's super black. So I was just trying to figure out, do I wanna do anything there? And really, I decided not to. So um, again, I'm just gonna spin it out, try to get a little bit more of that pink to come up uh, through the cells. And there's the end results. And that's the dried results. And then those are the glasses. Amazing. All right, so let's get to bloom number four. Well, it looks like I'm running out of my pillow paint, but I've got a whole canister over to the side. So I'm just taking it and I'm spreading it out, clear out to the sides, into the corners. And then uh, you didn't see me, but I went ahead and put, uh, um, you know, some into the center. So now I'm just adding in the colors. There's that neon, right? And, and this is the opportunity for me to try new color palettes. And I'm finding the pink and the neon green and the purple really go really cool together. Um, and then this is an interference blue that I've put on top of that. That's by Golden. And then um, let's just put a little bit of the hot pink, a little bit more a fluorescent look to it as well. All right, so here comes the cell activator. It is again, the American Floetrol Amsterdam paint glue all and the wood uh, conditioner by Minwax. And I mix that all together and I put it in a container and then I take it and I press down with my air and from my mouth and out. Now you see how those cells come up when you do that as you go across. Now that one I caught less white and more of the color and that's what happened there so now i'm trying to get more of the white out and pressing down like just bursts of air to kind of allow those um, cells to pop up to the surface see in that color pretty all right so i didn't like that there's too much of the white so i decided to do a little curly cue there as well and if you notice again on this one i didn't get the pillow paint all the way to the corners i really recommend you doing that i really recommend you taking the time and pushing the paint all the way out to the corners the paint glides across when you spin it out way better if you do that than it does um, if you don't and when you spin it out, and I think I said this earlier in this video, but when you spin it out, you don't have to spin it out really fast. I find myself thinking I got to like spin it super fast, but really you just want the weight of the paint to go to the edges as you're opening up those um, cells. And this is really honestly a little too fast. And um, yeah, but even though it's too fast, check out these colors. And it looks good on this 
and it looks good on wine glasses. So I'm super impressed with how these bloom techniques look on a wine glass. So check this out. There's the dried results. There's the wine glasses. Aren't they pretty? I just really love that. Okay, so later on the day I did some more and um, these are just some different darker colors. And so here is bloom number five. Again, we're gonna take the Sherwin-Williams Base C and add it to uh, the polyacrylic and that's what you get for the mix and then you put that one-to-one -one ratio with your paint, whatever color paint you want. And I make up a bunch of paints. I just do. I just think that that's just a little bit easier for myself. I just spend a day and do that. Here's the cell activator. Um, and then here's me blowing across so that you can see as I blow down, I push the paint out and across the pillow. And here again, I didn't on this one, use my pillow paint clear out to the corners. Um, but this looks really cool. That gold really kind of pops through there and so does that neon green. Really like that one. Cool. You gotta see my head. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, there's the end results. Here's the dried results. And then that's, and then those are the results on the wine glasses. So my dried results are already as I've pulled off the paint off of the actual tile. And you'll see that here at the very end, how I do that, how I get up underneath it. And it's super easy. It really is super, super easy uh, to peel the paint off of these tiles uh, because they're glossy. And then that gloss base paint or the pillow paint works really, really, really great. Um, as soon as it's dry, it just peels right up. It's perfect. It works out really good. And, and you can do these uh, pillow, you can do these blooms if you really wanted to and dip your glasses in it. But then the bottoms of them, you'll have to either paint uh, because nine times out of 10, you get like this little like um, paint drip uh, if you will. All right, so here comes the cell activator for this one. And you notice I did put the um, golden interference gold on top of that right before the cell activator. And it, I, I just love those interference gold, the interference blue, um, the interference colors by golden are awesome um, in these different um, blooms. So I'm trying to paint, I'm trying to push the paint across. I'm still in the process at this moment when I'm making these videos to really discover how I blow across. Uh, I'm not really that great at it right here. I get a little bit better as these videos go on, but you can see those cells coming together uh, or popping up, but there's a lot of white space in there. So I'm gonna take my skewer like I'm doing right now and I'm making those curly cues inside there. I'm wanting to bring the color of the paint into the center. That's what I'm trying to do there. All right, so here we go. We're spinning it out, just like you can see me spinning it out. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I need to commentate, but you can see it. Um, and there are the end results, just beautiful. I must not have had the dry end results. Okay, so here is the third set of these glasses of 12 that I have done. Um, and I will show you both the bottoms. Sorry for my lighting and the reflection. I'll show you the bottoms and the tops. So this is kind of a mixture. Let's get to the tops. Okay, so here are the tops of these. You can kind of see them through the glass. It's kind of blurry there. Let me kind of try to get a little bit better view. There you go. Um, so these are the tops. So as you're looking down from the top, and let me show you the bottoms. Okay, so here are the bottoms, and again, my lighting is just terrible today. Um, it's not very nice out, cold and yucky, um, but these are the bottoms. All right, well, thanks for joining me, and hopefully, maybe I'll get a different picture and a different video, but here they are for right now. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you better views. All right, bye.
So the next step is to peel the paint off and of course after it dries. And I was able to allow these to dry just 24 hours. But I take my X-Acto knife or the utility knife and I go from corner to corner. And again, corner to corner. Then you can just take the utility knife and kind of peel up one corner and just slowly peel the skin off of the tile. It is as easy as that. Seriously, these are super easy to do. So let me just show you another one. I love this one. So pretty. Love it. All right, so you go from corner to corner. And you can kind of see how I have my thumb on the blade. It helps me to guide it. Notice how my hand is also off to the side, out of the way from the blade. And then I just peel it from the corner and I peel it all the way off. I love it. Look at that shimmer. So pretty. So the first thing I do is I have my glasses in my box that I receive them in and I take them and I flip them upside down so they look like that. So I take them and I flip them upside down. And then I take Windex and I clean off the bottoms because right now they're pretty dusty and I wanna make sure that my skins adhere to that. So that's the first step I do. So I'm gonna do that before I start cutting out my skin. So let me get that done. Okay, so I'm gonna flip all of these over and I'm gonna use this box as my device of how to keep everything together and clean when I go to resin. And I'll show you that here in just a little bit, but um, it's going to be really cool. So it looks like there is one um, that's slightly different than the bottoms. Sometimes when you buy in bulk, they give you different bottoms, but this one is has a bigger divot in it. Um, and it, it's working out fine on my other one. So, but you, you just so that you're aware of that, that does sometimes happen. So then I just take my Windex. I'm just taking my Windex and I'm just spraying it on here. And then I don't, all I want to do is just get the dust off of the bottom for right now. I'm going to end up washing these prior to me using them for the fundraiser but right now all I care about is making sure that the bottoms are clean so that I get up here the actual um, skins to them so and then I just let those dry for just a few minutes so uh, I'll be right back and I'll show you the skins and how I so I have my Liquitex gloss medium uh, I have that off to the side here I've got my scissors I've got my um, exacto knife I have a glass a wine glass and I've got my tape. So the first thing I do is I kind of decide what I really like for the bottom. So this one, I definitely want the bottom there. And so I grab my X-Acto knife and I open it up and lock it in place. I put my hand on top of the glass and then I take my sharp knife my sharp exacto knife and I go around it. Now you're going to notice that my glass accidentally slips from time to time. So you've got to be careful. I don't put my hand down here because I'm afraid that my sharp utility knife, exacto knife will cut me. So I keep my hand up above and I cut from the top. So I just take it and go around and cut from the top. Okay. So I got this mostly cut out. And then I want to go ahead and do my second one. So this is my second one. I want to do two. I'm doing two glasses at once with one tile, with one tile skin or one skin tile. And it doesn't have to be exact or perfect because I'm going to use the scissors next. So then I take those two things and I put them off to the side and I take off my circles. So you can kind of see that it's not exact right around there. And then sometimes you're going to notice that you didn't cut it all the way through like that one right there. And that's what my scissors are for is just to kind of, you see the edges um, indented in there and I just cut it out. So then I'm going to take my skins and I'm going to adhere them to the back of this so that they are back to back. So I flip this over and I'm going to put my skins here and here and I'm going to go ahead and glue them down right away. So, um, and it looks like I cut into there, so I got to be really careful. 
If you accidentally cut or there's a crack, you can use your pens to help hide that. So I'll show you that here in just a second because I think I'm gonna have to hide that one. So, so I get just a tiny bit of my Liquitex gloss medium and I just put on here, that's all you need for gluing these circles down to each other. And I'm just gonna put a little bit like that and then I'm gonna put my skin on top of here and just kind of rub it down. And the same thing with this one here. Try to get it as close out away from that crack as I can, but still being able to get a full circle. Okay, and then I adhere it there. Then I take my scissors, and I know this is time consuming, but let me tell you, they look so much better than not taking the time to cut them circles and not to um, put them back to back and glue them and uh, it just looks gorgeous now you can just put one circle on the glass and i'll show you that in this next one that i do you can do that if you want and then paint over it i've done that before so there's one disc done and then here i'm going to take another one and I keep my skins, I've got a pile of them. I did 96 of them last night, yesterday afternoon and last night. And um, I use those skins for magnets and I'll show you what I've got here in just a second. But I make sure as best I can that the white is covered and it's mostly in a circle um, like that. So that's, that's how I mostly do it. And let's see, there's a little bit of white right there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off there. But I wouldn't have to do that either. Okay, so then I take these skins. Let me just show you. These are my two discs. And then I have these magnets that I make as well. That there's enough on there to make that. And this one I don't like as well. But, you know, I could find something like if the center was more like that. That would look really cool, right? So I keep these just in case I use those for that off to the side. All right, so let's get back to what we are doing so I've got these two discs now, and I take two glasses right there, and these discs will go on the bottom. So then what I decide is which one, which side I like better from the top. So I put the glass down, and I kind of decide, okay, that looks kind of cool. That looks kind of cool. Let's put this one. Which one do I like better? Oh, I think I like... Ugh, that one's a tougher one. I think I like this one better with a deeper pink. And then what's going to happen is that's going to be my bottom. So that looks really pretty, right? Just like that. All right. So that's going to be this one. And then this one, I think. So then I have my two glasses. Let me put this more in the center for you. My two glasses, I've got, these are gonna be the bottoms that are gonna be seen from the top, so I keep them flipped up. Then I take my Liquitex Medium and I put one dot, just one, that's all you need is one little dot in the center. And then I take my brush and I just gently brush it across. Um, if you overwork this or not put enough on here or put too much, you're gonna see streaks from the other side. So um, I just kind of barely brush it on. Then I take my circle and I put it in my two fingers uh, side to side and I center it on here. Let me move this one off to the side so you can see better. I center it on here like that and I take my finger because there's an indent and I push it down. And then I take it, oh, and it slid a little bit, so let's put that back in the center. And then I just let it kind of go all the edges and push that down. So let's do the other one again. So I take my fingers, put them like that, get the sides, press in the center, and yeah, this one, I must have more uh, Liquitex on it than normal because it's sliding a little bit more. And then that's what it looks like from the top, right? I don't know if you can see that very well, but those look really, really cool. So <clears throat> you can kind of see how I've got an edge right there that's kind of sticking out. So that's what I use the scissors for. So I put my hand on the bottom to keep it from sliding and I take my scissors just on the edge, not underneath. If you get underneath it, 
you'll actually cut it too close. So I take it on the edge and I just snip around the edge to make it so you don't see it from the top. And you can't catch then your finger on it later and peel it off, right? All right, so there's that one, it's done. So I'm gonna put that one off to the side and then I'm gonna look at this one. This one, it looks like um, it's got a little bit on this side over here. Kind of moving it over just a little bit because I see some space that's not all the way to the edge. This one right here doesn't have space, all the way, it doesn't have something all the way to the edge. And actually that's not horrible. And so let me show you how I'm going to now uh, rectify that. So I'm gonna get these little skins out of the way. The next thing I do then is I use an old tape thing and I put it in the center of my tile and I grab a paint brush uh, pen whichever one color you think would look the best. So for this one in particular, I think I can either do gold. Um, I probably could do like that pink if I really wanted it. Um, green, that gold there, but I think I'm just gonna do this gold. So, um, and I just take the it and I just put it on the edge and I go a little bit at a time circling this. And if I need to get on, the actual top of it. Then I do that. And I, you don't have to do this, but this is just because I don't wanna see that little white, right? Of the skin that you can see when you look down on it right there. So that's that white. Can you see that? How oh, that's got some white right there. So I'm just gonna take my pin and go around it. And then sometimes I get it on the glass. So I use a paper towel and I just kind of circle it like this to get it off the glass. So it comes off nice. And then there you go. So that's the first one. Let me go ahead and do this one. And I, I put this here, it just helps me so I don't slide it off the tile. Um, it just is a, a little bit better for, uh, I don't know, maneuvering and being more exact as I'm trying to go around, try not to get on the bottom and get into the actual painting but if you do the great thing about these pens is um, all you got to do is add a little bit of water and to like your um, paper towel or your finger and you can get it off so and I take a little bit of extra time I'm taking a little more time than I normally do for you guys right now it takes me about seven minutes from the time I decide to cut the skin till I get it prepped for um, for two glasses to get it prepped for um, resin. Okay, so now that I've got the glass glasses done, I go ahead and put them down. I grab my tape, my painter's tape, and I want to protect my glass from the resin. So I just type down all four sides and I use it on the tile because here I'll show you why. So I cut on the tile so I don't cut anything. And then I use my tape on the tile because then I can go like this, get all my edges down and then I just peel it up and it looks like that. Okay, so I'll do this one here again for you guys. And you probably can tell I'm from the Midwest in the United States because I say, you guys, you guys. Instead of, I used to live in Houston and I said y'all all the time in Texas. Hey y'all, but I don't know, I'm just no longer that, I'm a Midwest gal now. All right, and so I just peel that off and there I go. And now they are ready for resin, all right? So I'm gonna put them in the box and I'm gonna show you how protected they are back into the box. Then I take my glasses and I just put them down in here and look at how well protected. Okay, I'm gonna measure my resin and you're gonna need your PPE, which is personal protection gear. I'm outside, so I don't need a respirator. And really with this stuff, you don't need a respirator. Okay, the key to resin is to make sure that you measure the exact amount. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on 
and I don't need much for these so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my let's see this one will be the hardener and pour out a little bit in there not a lot we'll go to one ounce Okay, it's exactly 1.06. You need to be exactly the same when you add in your resin. So you got your hardener in there already. Now I gotta add in my resin. 1.06 will get us 12 or 2.12. 2.12. Okay. 2.1, 2.5, 2.05, I mean. 2.16, so I didn't get quite 2.112, but that's okay. All right, then you have to, hey Siri, set timer, uh -huh. set timer for three minutes. Three minutes, starting now. So then you need to stir your resin for three minutes. This is a, I had a whole bunch of Panera extra glasses from when we did a, um, uh, I don't know, catering thing, so I just have an extra one, so I'm using it. Since I'm just doing a little bit of it, I'm not doing a huge amount, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it with this. Okay, so let me show you how I did my first coat of resin. So it was actually in the garage when it was super cold, so my resin was kind of thicker. So I ended up just spooning it in with a plastic spoon um, on to each single one that was in the same box. I was freezing. <laughs> I couldn't believe how cold it was that I was doing this and I really wanted to protect my family and the fumes. So I'm out in the garage in the middle of winter doing this and I think it was and I'm not kidding you I think it was a wind chill factor that day of like 20 below zero but Anyway, I'm out there doing this and um, all for a fundraiser, right? You can kind of see it looks milky white and that's just because there's a lot of air bubbles in there. And so this first um, coat that I'm doing, I'm just going to kind of get the resin in the middle and then I'm going to spread it with my spoon and then I'll heat it with my heat gun. You do have to be cautious with resin, um, you know, getting on yourself, on your hands, and um, really, uh, depending on what type of resin you are using, um, it has quite a bit of fumes and it can cause respiratory problems. So I had decided that I was gonna go ahead and use a respirator here, and so I actually have a respirator, so I'll show you a picture of me <laughs> with the respirator on. Um, but then I discovered that this particular resin I didn't need to, but yeah, it kept me warmer anyway. All right, well, let's take the heat gun and let's, um, heat these up and you kind of start high up and then you go down and you can kind of see how it's starting to like pop the bubbles, the air bubbles, and then you'll start to see it actually get warm and start moving a lot more than just popping the air bubbles. And it kind of looks like I'm moving fast, but I'm actually got this on a little bit faster mode. So you can kind of look through this and watch through this a little bit. You probably have already fast forward. And if you haven't, thanks for joining me and keeping going with me. But now you can kind of see I'm getting a little closer to the actual um, wine glass to heat it up, to heat that resin up and, and pop those air bubbles that are in there. Cause that's the big thing, right? You don't want that milky white. You want it clear, crystal clear. So you, you just need to make sure you heat it up enough that it's going to get rid of all those bubbles. And it was harder to work with, with it being so cold. So just be aware of that when you are using resin. And again on this, I was worried about them, the resin going over the side of the glasses. And after the first coat and with the second coat, I it didn't bother me because I just peeled it off. I just spent the time and just peeled it off. And yep, it adds more time. It does. Uh, but they look fabulous. 
and I'm so looking forward to showing this to the group of people at my um, fundraising event. See how shiny it's getting? They're looking so good. I think all the air bubbles are popped now and I'm just kind of making sure that it gets all the way to the edges. And on that one, you can kind of see. Okay, so welcome back. Now that you have done your resin, I wanna show you what I do next. So these I resined yesterday and um, I just wanna tell you a couple tricks that if you would get some resin on here while it's still wet rubbing alcohol works really really great for these so i just wanted to kind of show you that um, it's not so good once it's dry but while it's still wet okay so the items that you're going to need are possibly some scissors a exacto knife or what or technically a utility knife um, and then i used a small one too in order to kind of bend to get to things so um, those are the tools that i use typically it's just this one but i do use those ones from time to time okay so the first thing that i do is i check to see if it is dry enough and um, again i did these yesterday so the reason why I'm going ahead and doing them right away is I don't want them to get too hard. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape off. And then once the tape is off, you're gonna see that there is resin along here. Okay, so what I do is I take my X-Acto knife or what my husband calls the utility knife. And I just start in an area and I start, oops, I do it from the top. And I just put lotion on my hands, so that's not good. Let's get some gloves to make sure it doesn't slip because the worst thing you wanna do is to slip while you have a knife in your hand, right? Yeah, all right, let me get my gloves on. All right, so now that I have this, what I do is I take it from the top not from the bottom because if i go like this i tend to go into the design too much so i go from the top and i start right here and i start cutting along the edge now careful of where your thumb is careful where your other body parts are because if you accidentally like flip it you you've got to be careful there okay so i go along cutting that And then I discover I've got more. I go on the top now, just to make sure that all of the top is off. You know what I mean, all the top is off, is like all the resin is off the top of the area. So, did you see how that knife kind of went over here? It almost got me. So, you just have to be careful as you are doing these. And standing up where I'm at right now is just a harder way to do this. And honestly, the gloves are harder for me. So, so once I get that off, the sides off, it's warm or it's soft enough to kind of melt the sides. So then what I do is I take a paper towel or a towel and I just kind of friction it and then I meld the sides together. And I'm gonna use that with my hands. I'm gonna have to wash my hands all the lotion that's on them right now. And what that <clears throat> does is it kind of warms up the sides and it just kind of gets the sides to be more of a gloss instead of a cut area, okay? And so there it is, all done, ready to go. Then I always check to see if there's like any um, on the glass just in case. And if there would be, I use this right here to scrape off the edges. All right, kind of go away from yourself, scrape off the edges. 
of the resin, wherever that is. And I see just a little piece right here. There, okay, so that one's done. All right, I'm going to stop this and come back and wash my hands from this grease that I have right now. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna try this again. So I've got my tape here, get that out of the way. That one is done, put it off to the side. So let's do this one. Um, let's go ahead and take off the tape. This one doesn't have as much on the edges as the other one did, but again, from the top, get my glasses on. I take the resin off. And I do it on the day after I do resin, because if I do it on two or three days later, it gets so hard that it's almost like glass. And then it's really hard to get off. There. Okay, so now that I have my sides done, I can take my hand or a towel, like I did before, and I use friction to soften the edges because it's still 24 hours since I did my resin. So it softens the edges for me. So you should kind of see that I had, I actually had blue pen on that one. <laughs> Let me go get my towel. This is the one that I was using. So I just kind of use it friction and then I melt it. So there you go. And then I take this and I clean up my edges. Collects the pieces. All right, we'll do one more. Take the tape off. Nice and easy from the top. I just kind of saw it back and forth. I don't try to go too fast because then if I do, it'll like jerk up and I don't want it to hit me. Got to be very, very careful when you're working with sharp knives. Utility knife is sharp. Now on this one, there is some residue right here. So that one is now done. So looks like there's a little bit of resin right there. Take my towel, friction. And then I just kind of take my fingers and I push it into the sides and there you go thanks for joining me today and if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell and if you like this video I bet you're gonna like these as well thanks a lot and have a great day bye